Hello, my name is Victor Piccoli from Lifetime Customer Experience Team in Brazil. Did you know that 50% of the Fortune 500 list disappeared since 2000 and that 40% of it will disappear in the next 10 years? This has a lot to do with the fact that the way we interact with technology has changed. Companies need up-to-date, real-time information to make the right decisions. We have now new business models, new business processes, and a much more dynamic economy. In fact, today's digital economy is the least forgiving in history, and the companies that do not have the digital transformation at the heart of their strategy will be left behind. Artificial intelligence and machine learning. Intelligent things and IoT. Virtual and augmented reality. Blockchain. Conversational systems. Security. Digital health. Digital platforms. Big data and advanced analytics. How will they change customer experience? How will they change customer expectations? And is your company already adopting the digital mindset? Now, let's have a quick overall of each one of these trends. With the internet wave in 1990, we had 1 billion connected devices. With the mobile wave in 2000, we had 2 billion connected devices. Gartner estimates that today we have around 8.4 billion connected devices and by 2020 we should have around 30 billion connected devices. Studies also point out that by 2025 this number will get to 75 billion connected devices. So really everything that can be connected will be connected and the real value comes from the data masses generated by these devices and how it can be used to maximize solutions and process. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are a hot topic when it comes to digital transformation. In fact, they are the heart of SAP's 2020 strategy. According to Bank of America Merrill Lynch, systems equipped with artificial intelligence will mean a $70 billion market in the next years. So the opportunity is huge. We will have cheaper, faster, and smarter automation of everything from emails to assembly lines. In addition, 56% is the estimated growth of the machine learning and artificial intelligence market by 2020. Artificial intelligence will allow more natural modes of interaction with conversational systems and immersive experiences with virtual and augmented reality, but we'll get to these topics later. Machine learning is a major discipline of artificial intelligence, and machine learning is basically the ability of computers to learn from data without being explicitly programmed to do so. At SAP, SAP CLIA is SAP's brand around machine learning and is the foundation for intelligence. Many people struggle to understand the difference between these two, so let's keep it simple. On virtual reality, the user is completely surrounded by the virtual world. It's a digital recreation of a real-life setting. On the other hand, on augmented reality, the virtual object overlays the real world. According to Goldman Sachs, by 2025, the AR market will be worth $80 billion. And with AR, we have a big advantage because it does not require big investments in hardware since it can be used in devices that people already have, such as smartphones. A big advantage is that with these technologies, we can be working with virtual twins of real things. And that enables new business process, cost savings, and even ensures health and safety. Let me show you how with two examples. The Emirates Bank of Dubai had a project called Holo House. The buyers could see the houses through virtual models to make their purchase decisions, only after the banks could construct the houses. Great way of using technology for cost savings, right? Another case is in inspection cases. So inspection companies can simply send a robot to a dangerous site so that they can create a virtual twin of that place in a way that the expert can analyze it without even leaving his office. Digital twins are more than a virtual lookalike of a physical product. Spread across the entire product and asset life cycle, digital twins are used in engineering, manufacturing, operations, and service. Until now, each digital twin stood alone. But with product life cycles shrinking, ever-increasing streams of connected data, 
ever-growing networks and more complex production through software, mechanics, and electronics, you need to work across silos and ensure decision access for all disciplines. What if digital twins can have relationships and communicate with one another, creating a network? The real-world product and its virtual twin, bridging the physical and digital worlds at all points along the value chain. This opens the door to new innovation and multiplies the possibilities of what can be achieved. Drawing on actual usage data of connected products and assets, digital twins are the basis for new product-as-a-service business models. Using machine learning, live insights can be gained from the constant stream of real-time usage and performance data to continually automate, learn and improve throughout the value chain and across all business areas. Using blockchain technology, you can securely and reliably share digital twins across companies, governments, consumers, innovators and autonomous machines. The link from product twin and performance twin revolutionizes how the manufacturers of the products collaborate with the operators of the assets. Thus, you can improve collaboration and accelerate innovation and design for smarter and better products, resulting in new business models and never-before-imagined outcomes and new markets. Build and integrate your digital twins network with devices, with other digital twins, across business systems and organizations. So you heard of Bitcoins, right? Blockchain was originally used for Bitcoins, but it can be used in any transaction. According to the World Economic Forum, by 2027, 10% of the global GDP will be stored in blockchain. In blockchain, people are doing business in a peer-to-peer, network-based economies with no authorities. So basically, it eliminates the need of third parties. Let's think of some situations in which blockchain could be suitable so that we make it easier to understand. Let's say that I want to make a shipment of LCD displays from Shanghai to Rotterdam. In this process, I'm going to have involved the seller, the buyer, the importing party, the financing party, the insurance company, the logistics company. I'm going to have many parties involved and all of them would be better off with blockchain because of the fact that it eliminates the asymmetric information. So blockchain is totally suitable whenever you have multiple parties involved, when you have asymmetric information, when you want to minimize risk and fraud, and when you want transparency. Blockchain technology will revolutionize international trading. SAP is demonstrating how different parties can save time and money through digitized accelerated processes. In international trade, it's not just the seller and buyer involved. There are banks, insurers, carriers, freight forwarders, agents, brokers, and you can be sure there will be authorities involved. Today, parties exchange data and documents in an isolated peer-to-peer -peer manner. There is no consistent view of the process or document versions. Individual interfaces between partner systems are costly. Manual handling of paper-based documents is inefficient and delivering paper documents via express courier services adds another significant cost factor. Blockchain for Ocean Shipping aims to establish a new level of security, trust, and transparency. It transforms ocean shipping processes, enabling digital document sharing, signing, and approval. In short, this new solution brings cost savings, time efficiency, as well as the elimination of fraud and stolen freight. According to Gartner, conversation systems will be the next shift in the IT industry. And in 2018, 30% of our interactions with technology are going to be through conversation systems. And this allows up to 98.7% of cost savings in support cases. Not only that, but conversational systems free employees from repetitive functions, allowing them to focus on more exciting and complex aspects of their jobs so that they can deliver higher value to our customers. By the end of the day, we will increase employees' happiness and we will increase customer satisfaction. And it's important to mention that conversational systems have a lot to do with the concept of intelligent enterprise. 
and SAP has just released SAP Copilot, its brand new conversational system. Security has never been so important. On one hand, the volume and the value of data have been increasing, and on the other hand, the number of attacks and the vulnerability of the endpoints have been increasing. In some cases, 200 days go by before a company can detect there has been a data breach. Artificial intelligence is going to increase the connectedness of people and their healthcare. In fact, digital health is empowering consumers with information about their health. And we can see that simply by observing how many people nowadays have smartwatches. Also, paper-based medical records kill over a thousand people every day. And this is due to lack of information of the patient, bad handwriting, and incompleteness. So basically, you have to know a lot about a patient to make him or her quickly healthier again and technology is increasing the assertiveness and the efficiency of treatment. Digital health is all about making healthcare more data-driven. But currently in healthcare, we have lack of integration, connectivity, and network. Bill McDermott shared that once he had his accident, even though there were excellent doctors, informational workers kept on coming time after time asking for the same information. So, Nowadays, even though we have data spread through many different old platforms, we luckily have SAP Health Platform, which is going to solve the data integration problem, bringing together data that's spread through many different systems that are not synced. Data is the foundational component for any digital transformation discussion. In fact, data is the fuel for building advanced solutions that no one else can. And big data is a huge volume of data incoming at every minute that can be processed by traditional computing techniques. Let's see this box right here as the amount of data we used to have in 2015. Now, this is the amount of data we used to have in 2017, which means that 90% of the world's data was created in two years. But what's important is what we can learn from it. So, Analytics is a differentiating factor among competition. And at SAP, SAP Digital Boardroom is an example of a solution that uses big data and advanced analytics to maximize business outcomes. Digital Platform is the underlying technology that enables digital transformation. It's the foundation for the digital business framework. For companies to survive in a rapidly changing economy, they need the right mix of agility and stability. And according to a study made by Oxford Economics, one of the four pillars that distinguishes the leaders from the rest is investing in next-gen technology using the bimodal architecture. So now, let's check it. According to the bimodal IT approach, 
or mode one, we have the solutions for our process to work more efficiently, such as ERP or CRM. It's where we focus on maximizing operational efficiency. On the other hand, on mode two, we have the solutions to improve the interactions with the outside world, so it's a more innovative side. And they both have innovation cycles that are different, which means they're completely detached from each other, so we have the right mix of agility and stability. Hopefully, we made it easy to understand what are some current trends that can impact your business. On the next episode, we will show you how digital innovation works at SAP. And if you like this video, please share it with your colleagues so that you're all on the same mindset to become an intelligent enterprise.